everybody. Hope that you're all doing well. Hope you're not going crazy being cooped up at home. So let's get started with today's lesson. So we've, we've worked on our punches the last couple of days. Today we're going to do, uh, for the warm up, the first thing we're going to do, we're going to do the elbows and knee strikes. And I'd say most of the students in our school are familiar with the way we practice this. But we're going to start our fighting stance. And you're going to reach out your front arm with your hand open. This would be grabbing and controlling somebody's head. Same mechanics with your punch, where you're going to push with your back foot, hip rotating forward. We're going to strike with our elbow. And we extend both arms. This will be pushing the head down. Your back knee is going to come straight up. Knee strike. Again, reaching out and grabbing. One, pushing it out. Knee strike. A couple of notes here. So, I mean, same with the punch, you want to make sure you're not leaning too much so you lose your balance. Make sure the power is coming from fast, powerful hip rotation from and from pushing with your back leg on the elbow. With the knee strike, you want to be careful that you're not leaning back. All right, easy way to fall over if you know, you're grabbing onto somebody and they're giving you any kind of pressure forward. If you lean back, you're going to go down. So you want to hit one. Now my chest and shoulders stay up. Head stays up, driving the knee up and down. So same way we've been doing, I would suggest hitting that repetition on the one side, do 10 repetitions, switch the other side, do 10 more, maybe hit a set of push-ups in between, should review that push-up technique the same way. So remember, push-up, good push-up is all about keeping your body straight, bending the elbows, bring the chest to the floor, and then coming back up. You want to avoid putting your hips up, hanging them down, if you can, you don't want to collapse on the ground. Stuff like that. Body stays straight, up and down. Simple enough. So let's move on. So we're gonna do kicks on the wall a little bit differently today. Yesterday we did front kicks. We're gonna do them again today, but we're gonna add a side kick or a back kick to it. So what you're gonna do, and something I should note is that if you don't have a good amount of wall space, to do the kicks, always remember that you can use a chair to do these exercises. It works pretty well. So if I am going to use the chair, all I'm going to do is put my hands on it this way, bring the leg up, front kick, looking over my shoulder, back kick. Two, Three, four, five, and then switching sides, doing the other leg. A couple of notes on the technique here. When I bring my chamber up, I want the knee to be high. Now, a very common mistake is letting that knee drop down, and then you have the leg, the second kick, kind of swinging up. That's no good. What you want to be doing is engaging your hip flexors the whole time. So it really strengthens your legs and really improves your kicking ability. So when I bring the leg up, I extend. Now keeping the knee high, and it goes straight out. I want as little up and down motion as possible. So not this way. The leg swinging up and down. The leg comes up high. It stays up high. As much as you can. So, I think those are two good exercises to start with. Again, you do five or 10 repetitions like that. On one side, switch to the other side. Get a set. We have push-ups to the warm-ups, so why don't we do squat jumps in between kicks on the wall. Some notes on squat jumps. Remember, you don't want to be landing hard on the ground. It's not very good on your joints. So what you do is you bend down, like I'm sitting in a chair, right? Then I go straight up and then ease back into it. Try not to land hard. Up, down, up, down. I mean, sets of 10 of those would be a good one to supplement with today. Now, um, similar with the forms, is that we worked on a couple different parts the last two days this week. So today, we can think, I just have to think real quick about what we did. I believe 
Yesterday we did the knife hands from Kyangan Chodan. So this is another good part of Kyangan Chodan. Kyangan Chodan is an interesting one because this very similar Gijo forms. There's only so many parts of the form that get a little more complicated. So what? Nothing wrong with practicing the basics. Nothing wrong with. It's actually a very good practice to refine those very simple movements that are found in the Gijo forms. But why don't we do the middle line from Kyangan Chodan today? One. So that's the first movement. Again, start here. My transition. Hips facing to the side still. I push with that back leg, rotate the hips. Low block goes down. As I chamber my knife hand, hips will open slightly and then close the circular motion with the knife hand. Step up and turn. Drive. Step up, turn. Notice hips again to the side. Back leg pushes, hip rotates, two, and three. So you can do that one just for repetitions. Again, 10 repetitions of that part of the form, good amount. Take a break, do more push-ups, do more squat jumps, sit-ups, whatever, supplementary exercise that you'd like. Get up to another set of 10 maybe, you can do that two times, three times, whatever feels like a comfortable amount for you. Let's see, Pyongan Idan. Similar. Why don't we just do the middle line for that one now, too. So, after the side kick, you come down. One. Big, circular motion with your knife hand. Stepping up. Hips come square. And then open. Two. Three. Coming down. Stepping into your transition. Pushing with that back leg. Arm shoots out. Spear hand. Kyangan Samdan. Now, one of the problems with Pyongan Samdan is you got that big jump at the end, right? And also the outside inside crescent kicks going down the middle. So, all right, we can try them for today. But again, I always just warn everybody you like, have to have enough space. You're not going to be hitting your feet on anything, breaking anything in your house, or more importantly, make, making sure that you're not going to be injuring yourself doing any of this practice. So, Start here, arms are up. Maintain this position with your arms as best you can. Common mistake with this next part is taking a step first. It's kind of cheating. That gives you some momentum where you have to swing the leg up higher. What's a lot more difficult and the correct way to do the motion is this leg. From this position with your feet together, this leg just lifts straight up. One. Coming down, hip turns. Think of this motion with your arm like a block. You're knocking something out of the way. And the hips will turn forward slightly, strike, and back. Hips rotate. This your back leg makes that big crescent kick. With balance, coming down. Two. Hip rotate. And four. Big. Down. Three. Stepping through. Middle punch. Pyongan <sighs> Sadan. Why don't we start from here? Knee strike. Rotate. I would probably start this way. Arms are out. Knee strike. Turn. One. Two. A little bit of a shorter sequence in the form, but a nice one, one that I like to do. One, two, three. And Pyongan Odan. Well, that middle part is a nice one. So after these opening movements, we come down, hips turn. One. Rotate. Two. Remember that push. Arms come up, down, knee strike, knife hand, punch and peel. So that should do it for today. Once again, I hope everybody is uh, doing as well as it can be expected under the circumstances. And I hope you guys are all keeping up with your training. Um, something to keep in mind is I really appreciate some feedback. 
with this stuff. There's some options and different ways that we can do this. I'm considering starting to use Facebook Live, or maybe I, am, I know that YouTube also has a live option, where what I can do is set my camera up, and then you know, I, and we'll choose a time, or, you know, let's say we do it 5 p.m. every day, where I'll go live. And so you can stand in front of the computer screen and you can follow along while I'll go through you know, a training routine. So that kind of thing, you know, I'm, you know, I'm keeping up with my training as well over this break, so I think it actually might be a good idea instead of doing this format where I put a video together, I post it online, you guys kind of train whenever you'd like, we just choose a time that everybody tries to come together and train at the same time. And you know, we'll be able, unlike this short video where I just give some examples and expect you to do the repetitions, you know, we'll just be like a solid, you know, hour, 75 minutes where we start at five o'clock, we end at 6.15 and you know, I'll choose different exercises and I'll be doing them with you as you go. So once again, I'm happy to hear from you guys, see any footage of what you're doing at home. And um, yeah, I'd just be happy to hear from you guys. I miss everybody at the school. So wish you guys the best and I hope to hear from you soon. Thank you.